the business of insurance. So um, one of our focuses obviously is helping people um, protect their financial futures, help their protect their tomorrows is what we like to say. Um, but really insurance is what we do. I think um, our company as a whole, I'm, I'm really proud to um, own a business, to be an employer in the Mahoney Valley. And I think what we really offer um, is a place, a great workplace where people can grow, they can learn, um, that they can pursue their passions. And then from there, you know, some people might stay with us, some might go off into the community and do something else. Um, but I think that as a company, that's something that we really offer. Um, I um, spent many years working for Meridian Healthcare, and that's something I learned from Larry Moliterno. Um, he would say, you know, he felt would feel so proud to look around his, uh, the people that work there and his leadership team and to know that one day some of them might be leading their own organizations throughout the community. And um, I really took that and was inspired by that and I feel um, the same about my company. And the second part too is, you know, we have a culture that's very invested in the community. Um, I am involved in a lot of things myself, but it, it really, for me, I don't want it to end there. So we have that culture within our company if people, you know, we have a, um, a donation matching program, we do PTO, you know, time off um, for volunteer time. So um, those are all things I'm really proud of and I think we're making a difference um, as a business in the Mahoney Valley. A lot of people are surprised, especially when they come to work for us or they interview, that we have an unlimited PTO policy, um, which means we give unlimited time off. Um, that doesn't work in a lot of businesses. Um, for our business, it does. And what we're really trying to do is create a culture where people aren't just renting their jobs or just not clocking in nine to five, but it's something that they own, that they know that we're all moving in the same direction, we have goals, and if they need to take some time off to, to spend time with their kids or go to you know, sports games or um, pursue a volunteer opportunity, that time is there because we all know we're moving in the same direction. And um, I've debated this with a lot of other business owners because it can be a challenge, but it's something that's really worked for us and created a pretty awesome culture. Um, I would say people are often surprised um, when I tell them that I know a lot about the Bible. Um, I am not a very um, religious person. I don't lead with that a lot, but my father is a minister of a local church. And so I grew up learning so much about the Bible and I've actually applied a lot of principles to my own life. And um, I mean, my dad would have us do Bible drills where we'd hold up the Bible and we'd have to look up books of the Bible and certain scriptures. And so that has really served me well in business. And I've taken a lot, you know, from different stories and scriptures. And um, I think when I tell people that they're always surprised, um, but um, it's always kind of just been a fun part of who I am. I feel good about the future every time I talk to my 11 year old son. Um, people, you know, look at kids today and they'll say they're playing video games, they're disconnected. And I don't feel that way. I think um, a lot of times, even in business, I'll have a question or something I'm going for, going through and I'll even ask him. I think sometimes kids have the best ideas. Um, and they simplify things. I think the generation coming up, you know, the, the ones behind me, uh, behind all of us, um, have really are creative. They're um, invested in other people. And I, I think we're really going to see great things. I'm actually so excited to see, you know, we're going through so much as a, a in our world. And um, I think that our younger generation's got really going to bring some great stuff. What concerns me the most is disconnection and not disconnection in the sense we're online and technology, but disconnection in that we, um, I think in the world, but all obviously in the United States, we've broken off into factions based on our politics or our ideology. And those differences are turning us away from one another. We're blaming, um, there's causing so much hate and anger. And I think what we don't realize is 
that that turning away is that it's creating more and more disconnection. And what we forget is that how connected we are as people and that we need that belonging, we need that connection. And that it, you know, it does concern me because I, I see it happening more and more. You can see it in other countries across the world. You can see it in history where when people turn away from one another, um, I think that is scary. Um, so that's, you know, but I definitely think there's solutions and there's there are a lot that we could do moving forward to stop that. Well, I think that really is in line with the last question. Um, you know, as we move, you know, and, and separate and really divide into these separate groups, I think one of the best things we could do is really try and surround ourselves with people and have conversations with people that think differently than us and be open to that. I think there we're so divided that, you know, topics will come up and they're just, you know, absolutely not. We're closed minded. I, I do the same thing. And um, I think there's some topics I, I couldn't possibly understand where that person's coming from. And I think really asking questions and listening and trying to understand people, I think will bring us back together as we try and find common ground. The best advice I would give a young person is um, Surround yourself with the right people. I'm not sure who whose quote this is, but um, I am a true believer in that you are the sum or the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. And so find those people that inspire you, that challenge you, that, you know, are, are talking about the right things and um, encouraging you to be your best. And if you if those people aren't around you, start reading books, you know, or audio books, you know, just to really raise that bar in your life. Um, one of the best things I did in my life was pursue mentors intentionally. Early on in my career, I was 21, 22, I would look at women in our community that I admired and I called them on the phone and said, will you mentor me? Will you meet me for lunch? And these are women, I'm actually meeting with one right after this, that are still to this day coaches and mentors in my life. And I, that's what I would say, surround yourself with a core group of amazing people. Uh, so my father, the minister I talked about recently passed away and um, he had a saying all the time, he would preach it all the time, but find a need and fill it. And that has served me well in my life, um, whether that's in business, um, find a need, fill it. Um, you can build a business on that, um, but just also um, in the community, find needs, fill them. Don't complain, don't talk about it. Just if you identify something, fill that need. Um, same thing, I find that in my relationships. Um, family, um, find needs and fill them. And so that's a great piece of advice that my dad has given me and I'd love to see it on a billboard one day.